we talk about the transactions, we ask manufacturers and we ask distributors to document costs. What does it cost? To, remember I told you all the interviews and people sharing specific data for most of the distributors, and, and, and I'm giving you an average, there was a range here, there's more detail in the white paper I want you to download that the Cap Council published, but 0.22% of revenue was spa administration costs all in. Right? That's, that's a hard number, right? So you can say, right, we all have beautiful children that have above average intelligence, right? Or at least that's what we want to believe. Go take a look at your numbers, just a hand grenade. You know, if it turns out you're spending 1% of revenue on spa, there's a, this is a technical consulting term, you suck. I mean, it just, you know, the opportunity for improvement's huge, though. Now, manufacturers had a much harder time. Because here's the part that's different, and we're gonna talk a lot about this. There are two parts to spas that in the past we lumped together, and they're fundamentally different. One is very much about competition, the other is about administration. There's a price discovery, there's a spa setup. Think about the activity that goes with, we got a competitive situation, we have to set up a spa. That's a price discovery. That's a, if you think about it, I'm gonna show you how functional discounts work and the rest of this goes together. That is always gonna be very competitive. You can't just as a distributor go in and, and, I mean, we've seen this in this industry over and over. You talk to a sales guy, you know, and they get last look, and then the sales guy comes to you and say, well, my customers don't give last look. Well, that means they give it to somebody else. And that, that, that they may be very professional about this, but doesn't every contractor have favorite distributors? And things where they, I mean, that's the nature of the beast. We're still analog beings in a digital world. And, and earning that is a form of competitive advantage. People build money, spend money on relationships to be able to get access and to earn that trust to actually be able to go through effective price discovery. That's never going to be standardized. The administration part can be. We've mixed the two up, and because we didn't carve out that competitive piece, we've gotten paralyzed on the administrative side. The manufacturers were absolutely unable, all the, and, and you would know, in this room, you guys would know the names of most of the people we talked to. Just go look at the Cap Council, you can figure it out, it ain't rocket science. They mush spa discovery and spa administration into the same thing, and they couldn't separate it. The key punchline, we said, well, is this cost unmanageable? What, uh, how big a pain in your butt is it? And they'd fundamentally come back to us and they'd say, you know what, if it was 100% of the business, we'd probably adjust into stock pricing. This is a source of profit, and virtually every manufacturer that we spoke with measures the, what's called pricing realization of their spa activity. How much money would they get? And they know they have charts, they have trend lines, they can see it by product, they can know where they are by product life cycle. They actually measure distributors from champ of the camp to chump of the dump, right? I can trust this distributor, they're a partner. These, these guys I don't trust at all, I know they always lie. They track your error rates and lie, lying and you know, I mean, it, it's, there's a, the data at the manufacturer side is probably, from an analytics point of view, is probably 10 times better than what you would see on most distributors. Now I have to say most because there are some distributors that are just as sophisticated as the manufacturers. Now, here's the idea of a functional discount. We've done a lot of studies on how distributors create demand in a market. Do, if I'm a distributor, do I want to go out and, and pioneer a new product for a manufacturer? Do I want to get the thing designed in? Every customer always says, I'm happy with my current supplier. Do I want to invest money as a distributor to get this customer to choose this product that I'm representing? Or do I want to be the distributor that's the fast follower? I let all these other guys go out, push, 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 go sell it, and you know what? I don't have all that investment in sales calls. I'll come in and at the competitive bid, I'll be five points lower, kiss my ring, I get the PO. Right? Spas, in, with some manufacturers in some situations, this is consistently inconsistent, use spas as a functional discount to protect a distributor that's doing demand creation activity. And for those of you that think you have to, manufacturers that think that they have to give, anytime you give a distributor a price, you have to give it to other distributors, 
you have bad legal advice, your legal counsel is ill-advised, and is significantly out of step with what's going on in the world. I'm just telling you right now, you can have your legal counsel call up, and, and we're happy to talk to them, and we can send them to the people that do that kind of stuff. Their, their resale price agreements are taking the industrial world by storm, by storm. And, and, and so fundamentally, if a manufacturer wants to be aligned with distributors and they say, I want you to invest and grow my market and you go capture a customer and you displace my competition with me, I will protect you with the spa. And I, as a manufacturer, am never going to tell the customer who they have to buy from. But I'm going to let you take a gun to a knife fight because I'm giving you a price that the other guys don't get. Here's a new term. I got this from Mo Barsima. And I forget who she said she got it from. But there's a thing called a spa, and there's a thing called a PA. Sorry, just consultants like to make up acronyms. Usually we go with three-letter acronyms. It's a two-letter acronym. Pricing agreement. I'm a manufacturer. For small contractors, here's my pricing agreement that every distributor gets for these products with these kinds of customers. And I have all these agreements, and everybody's got the same thing. And we create this huge administrative load Right, to keep track of all this, because you got, and PAWs basically are fundamentally different. We're doing, that's where more of our stupid stuff's doing. A SPA, if I'm using it as a functional discount, is fundamentally different because what that functional discount is doing is it's saying, I'm paying my distributor for leveraging their relationship equity to do pricing discovery to find out what is the price that I can capture that business at so I, the manufacturer, can figure out what discount I need to give to my distributor so they're willing to invest and grow my business. A PA is something entirely different. Entirely different. I'm, I'm, I've got a whole Dennis Miller routine on that. With Eric in the room, I'm going to be somewhat circum... No, I'm not. I'm not going to do the whole thing. How do we improve it? How do we take what we've got right now? I made this point about the pre-sale demand creation and the administration. And as long as we treat these differently, and if you mush these together, you're going to go down a rabbit hole, you're going to spend time and money and get absolutely nowhere. The spa discovery process is part of the competitive advantage that you have in a marketplace as a manufacturer or distributor. Setting that thing up. All the administrative stuff is, if you think, if you're into lean, if you're into Muda, think waste, there, there's no value added activity there. And so what you're trying to do is you're trying to minimize that as much as you can. So the other thing what we found on the setup, this is really interesting. There's all this discussion, and, and by the way, the. The, the, standard, the standard view, when we're all in a group, right? NAD's got to reflect the industry view. We're all in a group. It's all about technology, and we've got to get all this stuff standardized. It's going to be great once it's all done, right? SPA setup across the board. Across the board. Manufacturers, distributors, absolutely no difference. Experience matters. You cannot take a rookie and put him into SPA discovery or have them try to negotiate with manufacturers and start telling stories, there's a level of trust that needs to exist between a manufacturer and distributor, and people earn trust by repeated activity under uncertainty that's consistent. You can lose trust very quickly, we all know that. So the people that were good at spas, had, and, and this is where you have folks that had 20 years in the industry, and they're worth every nickel of what they got, because there's not one year of experience repeated 20 times. They built that relationship, it's trust, and it works on both sides. Technology has nothing to do with trust. Does everybody understand that? I mean, we can automate the process all along, but if we're not trusting each other, everything, I mean, and that trust thing is really critical. Every manufacturer we spoke with, every distributor, the setup requires experience so we can separate what's negotiation, what isn't negotiation, what do we need to do to capture the business with the customer. The claims is no value added at all. There are, and by the way, there are huge differences. If I was going to talk about a scale of 1 to 10, and I'm going to show you what, what it actually looks like, but the cliff notes, in case you suffer like me from attention deficit disorder, one is a train wreck. 10 is you're squared away, 
completely. There are major manufacturers and privately held distributors in this country, North America, that are tens in terms of spa administration, that are tens, nines and tens. There's a whole bunch more that are ones and twos. I mean, global manufacturers that I'd rate as a one or two. I mean, the, the range of activity is absolutely, it's ludicrous, which I don't understand, and I think that's gonna be the next thing that, that the CAP Council is gonna dig into. The, I, I think I already talked about this. This is why you're never going to see a standardized NAD deal. I talked about the key concept here. But when you start talking about transactions, has anybody noticed any fluctuation in copper prices here in the last year or so? Right? And what's, what's the old joke? Oh, I'm buying ahead because I know where the market's going, right? What's the old Dr. Phil? How's that working for you? Um, what fundamentally happens, people value inventory differently. Is it NIFO, is it FIFO, is it average cost? Is it, is, you know I mean? Everybody's all, all over the map on this. So if I wanna start talking about margin, if every manufacturer's valuing inventory different and distributors are valuing inventory different, and the cost of a lot of these products, especially in the commodities, vary from the time you create the spa until the spa is wrapped up and expires, how in the world is any of this going to be standardized? It just mathematically, it, it, it goes exponential on you before you even get to 20% of the cases. So, so fundamentally, the price discovery thing, as we talked about, is market specific. The transaction is never going to have a universal standard. We all talk about IDEA, and we, we, you know, we, we've had this sort of lingering, it's going to be great someday. Right? And we're still struggling with that. Everybody's got all kinds of issues. That's another seminar. But here's the success. This is a key part. If you're, if you're going to take notes on this and there's a couple of things you want to write down, capture this idea. Remember I said, number one, there's a huge range in practices. Some people, this is a source of competitive advantage. Some, this is a pain in their butt. The ones that have it as a competitive advantage, they do it partner to partner. If you wait for the industry to standardize it, you're a dead man walking. You find a partner, and if you're a manufacturer, you, you find a couple of distributors. If you're distributors, you find your, the key manufacturer you want. The people that have done well have done well not by waiting for an industry standard. And by the way, it's amazing how the systems look very similar. Those people that are, I would rate as, as nines and tens. You know, if you think, don't, have you noticed that all new cars pretty much look the same? Right? I mean, there's small styling differences, but fundamentally they're designed to have lower wind resistance to improve the fuel economy and everybody meet all the other stuff. As we, as we start trying to make things more efficient, they start to look more similar because there is a most efficient way to do it. A lot of these processes are very similar. NAD's mapped out every one of them that you can download for free. But if you're waiting for an industry to do it, it won't happen. It must be done trading partner to trading partner. That should be one of the big takeaways you get from this discussion. When we started off this project, everybody said, this is just a train wreck. We just got to kill it. It's wrong. It's like cancer. We just got to cut it out. You know, what are the things we can do? And everybody, you know, it's a, emotion is the lowest value of knowledge because there's no accountability for an opinion, right? You, everybody can have an opinion. There's no data needed for an opinion. Everybody can just pick their own. And everybody had opinions about this is bad, so here's what we should do. And I want to talk about two that both got trashed. And I'm not going to mention any names, but those of you that have been in the industry a while, well, some of you I know will know what I'm talking about because they were highly visible. Lower into stock pricing. If we do that, we're going to reduce the frequency of spas. If we can cut the administration, if we can reduce half the number of spas, we've taken half the pain away, right? Well, three major projects in the last four years have been conducted by manufacturers. And those of you that are nodding your heads, just let's keep it to yourself who it is. And the manufacturer said, OK, we'll play. I'm going to give you a lower end of stock price. And I just don't want to hear about there's no more spas. We're done. Unless, unless it's over a $100,000 transaction, don't even talk to me. Everybody got the picture? And a bunch of distributors are going, yeah, man, let's rock. All three projects were terminated early. 
All three projects were terminated early and violently. Why? Remember my little bell curve I showed you, the pocket price ban? It's kind of like the monkey on cocaine. I'm sorry for the metaphor. You know, the monkey just can't get enough cocaine. You know, and the distributor goes, well, give me an extra five, give me an extra five. And I'm going to go out and get market share. I'm going to be more competitive. And then everybody's doing the same thing. And then they all end up coming back like 30 to 45 days later and going, give me another fix. I need another five. Manufacturers, it just absolutely failed. Now, how it failed is interesting. Because distribution didn't screw it up as a group. A couple of distributors did. Those distributors that had effective pricing discipline that were well managed, followed the rules, it was great. And you know what? Because they reduced the number of transactions, it was highly effective to them. But all of a sudden, now I'm sitting here, remember pricing controlled by the dumbest guy in the market? Right? And the dumbest guy in the market never thinks of the dumbest guy in the market. They always think I'm reacting to competitive pressure. Well, take the picture of a sales guy, right? You all have salespeople. Sales guy comes in, this is a really big competitive quote. I'm the sales manager. What's target pricing? Really low. Well, who's bidding on it? Everybody. That's what we call a data-free discussion. And all it takes, it was really interesting. I mean, cause, I mean you could actually start talking about restraining trade and, and the rest of it. And, and I think that's part of the reason they pulled the plug on it. I mean, it was legitimate. Everybody wearing a white hat trying to do something right for the industry. And all it took were a couple idiots. And I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm a consultant. I don't own any of these distributors. All it took is a couple idiots to screw it right in the ground. The other thing, the post-action credit requires distributors get manufacturers. If manufacturers give them all point of sale, I can decide how much, let the manufacturer control distributor margin. The distributors in my room, how good an idea is that? Yeah, right, a bunch of interesting facial expressions. The reason we do spas is because it is the most effective way to, range, to deal with the huge range of transactions that we have to deal with. 